Hello and welcome to Artifacts with Edie, a live show and tell of the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society. My name is Edie Steiner and I'm a music therapist with Akron Public Schools at Bridges Learning Center. I'm also the shepherdess at the Perkins Stone Mansion and the Summit County Historical Society. Our weekly game show, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie, takes place tomorrow, live at 11.30. Each episode this week is your study guide. Can you take home the title Smarter Than a Border Collie? Tune in tomorrow to find out. Good morning to our scholars who are watching from Bridges Learning Center and a special hello to a young scholar named Gracie from Betty Jane Community Learning Center and her historically awesome friends who are watching together with their teacher through social distancing. There's I am broadcasting to you one more time, just so you keep it in the back of your mind. We're in the John Brown House in the heart of the city of Akron, and the John Brown House will soon be open to you and your families to come and visit once again as we follow the governor's plan. When you visit, I hope that visiting this home will inspire you. Until you can visit us, please have those conversations in your home about how young scholars think and feel when they hear today's story. Developing a respectful understanding of others and a positive sense of self is essential to processing stories about enslaved people. As an educator, I struggle with this history and I'm deeply troubled by it. And I struggle sharing it with you. I don't have the answers of how people, children, mothers, fathers, and families could have been enslaved. Learning about this point in the history of the United States has forced me to decide how to use my life to help young scholars and the community to have a better future. In 1849, John Brown moved his wife and his youngest children to the Adirondacks in North Elba, New York, to a settlement called Timbuktu which was a city made up of mostly free African-American men. Here, Brown taught farming to the settlers while he continued to work with his partnership in Akron. Soon, however, Brown needed to return to Akron to care for Colonel Perkins' Merino and Saxony sheep on Mutton Hill for another four years. In the end, Brown wrote his sons a letter to let them know how the wool partnership ended in 1855. He said, we have great reason to be thankful that we have had so prosperous a year and have terminated our connection with Mr. Perkins so comfortably and on such friendly terms. Share John Brown as the family was influenced to move back to North Alba, leaving Summit County and the Ohio Western Reserve. Ohio was a free state law required that anywhere in the United States, any slave could be captured and returned to their masters. Unfortunately, free African-American men and women were often taken against their will. Free states like Ohio were supposed to cooperate. In episode nine, you learned what happened when two men tried to take Barber Jim Worthington in Akron but abolitionists gave this law the nickname of the bloodhound law for the bloodhound dogs that were used to track down the freedom seekers. This map is a comparative areas of the free and slave states. The Kansas Nebraska Act of 1854 created the territories of Kansas and Nebraska. This allowed each to decide and vote whether slavery would be permitted. During this time, John Brown's sons li were living in the Kansas Territory and were threatened by people who believed that slavery was okay. They pleaded for help and supplies. And so John Brown and his other sons and his son-in-law, they arrived with weapons and supplies and some that they had picked up from Akron along the way. They helped to build shelters and formed a unit of armed citizens of the free state settlers. 
Then in May of 1856, in revenge for what, evil, what the evil of pro-slavery forces had done, and after wildly searching the Lawrence, Kansas Territory, free state headquarters and newspapers, John Brown and his sons went to the nearby Pottawatomie Creek. There, they took pro, five pro-slavery men from their homes and they killed them with broad swords, possibly donated by Lucas Bierce of Akron, Ohio. John Brown never admitted to his participation in this, but rather the men of the Brown family escaped and they sought refuge in Iowa. It was there though that they got together to train people who would later help to raid the U.S. Armory in Harpers Ferry. John Brown organized the Constitutional Convention at Chatham, Ontario in May of 1856. This town, I'm sorry, May of 1858, the dogs are distracting me. The town, this town was the last stop on the Underground Railroad and here, Freedom seekers were finally free. Here, 34 African Canadians and African Americans and 12 white men were present. Brown offered his temporary constitution and rules for the people of the United States, which had been written in Frederick Douglass's home in Rochester, New York. They had one minor change. The document was approved and signed by all who were present. The passion of these individuals, the passion that these individuals had would eventually encourage others to come together and change the lives of four million people enslaved in the United States before the Civil War. Before that would happen, two significant conductors on the Underground Railroad would need to meet. It was in Canada that Brown met Harriet Tubman, and she was known as the Moses of her people for her dedicated efforts to aid, in, aid the freedom seekers to gain their freedom by way of the Underground Railroad. She made eight secret trips to Maryland's Eastern Shore to lead dozens of freedom seekers north to freedom. Tubman and Brown had a very trusting relationship, and he dubbed her General Tubman and asked her to join him at Harper's Ferry in 1859, but a head injury from when she was a slave fired up, and she was unable to participate. Harriet Tubman called him Captain Brown. So on October 16, 1859, abolitionist John Brown, a man who had spent most of his life in Summit County and in, lived in Akron, led a group of 21 men, five who were African Americans and 16 who were white, to the arsenal at Harpers Ferry, Virginia. There he had hoped to seize the weapons at the arsenal, arm the slaves, and spark a revolt across the nation to end slavery. Even though they captured the armory, the raid was essentially a failure. 10 of his men were killed during the raid and six were captured by the US Marines. The men were later put to trial and hanged and five of them escaped and were never caught. John Brown himself was also captured during this time. He was put on trial and condemned to death for actions of treason. Treason is the betrayal of the alliance towards one's own country by committing hostile acts. During this trial, he only admitted one thing, that everything he did was to end slavery. On December 2nd, 1859, John Brown was hanged at Charlestown, Virginia. In Akron, the businesses closed and the church bells rang. His wife, Mary, accompanied his body back to New York for burial on the grounds of his farmhouse in North Elba, New York. Osborne Perry Anderson was the only surviving African-American who authored an eyewitness account of the raid on Harper's Ferry. He later became a soldier in the Union Army during the Civil War. I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood.
Scholars, what do you believe in? What do you consider to be just or equal? In what ways can you relate to the events that happened just before the Civil War to now? Today, Thursday, May 6, 2020, have we reached the point of liberty and justice for all? Let's review and get ready to unveil our artifact of the day. What was John Brown trying to do when he raided Harper's Ferry? Was it A, take one of George Washington's family members hostage, B, to become a martyr, C, to avenge the deaths in Lawrence, Kansas, or D, to start a rebellion to end slavery? Yes, the answer is D. The goal of John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry was to start a rebellion to end slavery in the United States. Question two, where did the raid on Harper's Ferry occur? Was it A, West Virginia, B, Maryland, C, Virginia, or D, Pennsylvania? Great listening. If you said Virginia, you've used your map skills quite well. Well, the raid on Harper's Ferry did happen in Virginia. Today, the historic location is actually in West Virginia. So now I have two questions for you and they are both true or false. Question one, most people in the South called John Brown a traitor. Question two, Many people in the North called John Brown a hero. Both of these questions are true. History allows us to examine ourselves and the things that we stand for. To some people, John Brown is a terrorist. And to some people, he is a brave hero. In Akron, in Summit County, they called him a neighbor. Only you can decide for yourself what this story means. Today's artifact, though, takes a strong statement of opinion that John Brown was an Akronite, a family man, a shepherd, an abolitionist, and as Harriet Tubman once said, John Brown did more for her people than Abraham Lincoln. So what could this artifact be? If you said a sculpture of John Brown by Akron artist Woodrow Nash, then you are today's history scholar of the day. This sculpture was created by Woodrow Nash, an Akron-born artist whose studio is just actually a few blocks from John Brown's former home on Copley Road in Akron. Nash's website is full of fascinating information about how he blends expressionism, complex symbolism to tell an intellectual and emotional journey. This sculpture, is actually made from clay and it was fired in an electronic pit using the Raku effect. And here's a picture of Nash signing the sculpture. The first of several sculptures that Nash has been commissioned to make for the Summit County Historical Society of the Army of African Americans that fought along with Brown. This sculpture was signed by Nash during our Juneteenth celebration in 2019. While John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry was unsuccessful in ending slavery, it did force our nation to pay attention to the issue. People disagreed about the trial of Brown, which helped Republican candidate Abraham Lincoln actually win the election in 1860. Some people were angry with the results of the election, which led in part to South Carolina deciding to succeed from the United States an action that led to the turn of the Civil War, which is another story for another episode. For today's scholars, know that you will change the world, and tomorrow we will be testing your learning against the Border Collies. I will post the game code in our stories on Facebook and also um, post it in our feed. And I will see you tomorrow at 1130 for another episode of Artifacts with Edie and our exciting game show, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie? Here I, tell, I show and tell the artifacts of the Summit County Historical Society where history is always within reach.